get their financial advice from the media. And the media is, is working for the bank and the government because think about it. First of all, the, the first thing we hear is you buy a house is generational wealth. Like this house here, this ain't no generational wealth. If you offer me money right now, I sell this so quickly, the eyes, your eyes really die. <laughs> Done, I sell it off. Wow. But this is not generational wealth. This is just to create memories for my children. That's all. So they could enjoy themselves, have that lifestyle. So they'll say, man, this is beautiful. But my kids don't want this house. They will never want this house. They don't want it. They, they enjoy it now, right? But they're going to get married and gone. Most people get their... So basically, this guy, he uh put some down at the bottom to where he said, your house is not an investment unless you're making money. Uh, kids get older, 15, maybe 30 years into that house. Due to inflation, that house is going to be worth at minimum, minimum 20 to 30 percent more than what you bought it for at minimum. So unless you're making money, yeah, you're going to make money long term. That's why they're talking about housing being generational wealth, because just like he said, most of the time it's true. Kids will sell that house. If kids are financially stable, they will sell that house, reap the money off of it, and then go get more properties. You know how many houses, if, just like I told, for instance, about uh, my friend that had that uh, house, he bought for two fifty and ended up selling it for five fifty. Let's say his kids was at that moment and, you know, they had houses. They were well off. Why would they want to stay in a house that they grew up in unless they wanted some type of memories? Other than that, they will sell the house, get the 550 and depending on how many kids, if it's one child, they take the whole 550 because the house should have been paid off. And if not, once again, you know, 80, st staying in a house that long with no more than fifty to $80,000. And they're still walking away with four, like four seventy to almost uh, $500,000. And with $500,000, what can you do with $500,000? A lot. So, sometimes you have the media giving you these notions that houses are not generational wealth. But then you also have sometimes advisors and other people to persuade you to different ways. Take, for instance, like Steve Harvey said. He had a friend that's leaving his kids... Uh, 500,000, I think it was 500,000 uh, a piece. So he had three kids. That's, I mean, 500 million. So with three kids, that's $1.5 billion. Yeah, I know some messing up with the math, but that's $1.5 billion he's leaving for his kids. Oh, alarm. Sorry about that. But the crazy part is, you know, what Steve said, he's spending 85% of his money. Steve have a lot of kids from marriages. So when it come down to it, uh, he's actually trying not to leave his kids anything. Why other communities try to promote giving more money to their kids to giving them a leg up in society. So honestly, like I said, sometimes these celebrities and advisors they lead you in the wrong direction because it's more profitable for them because i know people that do like um investments they'll tell you this is the best time and this is the way they invest but if they're not investing and let's say they sell houses they'll tell you that's the best thing to do is buy a house i mean it's only because they're in that market if there wasn't in that market it will be no question to even ask or it'll be silly to even, you know, refer information to them about this situation. So buying a house is the best way to give generational wealth. Even if you're single and by yourself, it's more of a profit for you long term because the older you get, the less of a house you want. So you take that house, put it on the market, sell it, grab the money, take that and use for your retirement. Most people don't have anything planned for retirement, but Medicare and Medicaid, they only pay out so much. You know, I know a person now, um, they uh, had a situation with their car. They're older. 
Who's going to come, you know, take them to doctor appointments? Medicare and Medicaid is only set up to have so many appointments regulated per year. And otherwise, you have to fend for yourself. You know, uh, personal care, let's say you get ill or something. With you being single, selling at a house gives you amount to where you can um, have a nurse come and live in nurse come stay with you because you have the money. They have nursing homes that cost about three thousand dollars a month. But with this nursing home, all your amenities are paid for medical uh, being ran through to where they'll take you to your doctor's appointment, take you get groceries, anything. You know, you want to go out on an outing, they have a little outing set up in these nursing homes to where they take all the elderly. They have a nurse that can sit with you 24 hours. Most of them get lonely. Family members don't come. See, those are the things that you plan for with that money. So if you had kids or didn't have kids, that's what the money's for. So a lot of people got to start thinking long term. You know, the short term is cool for right now, but long term, what do you see yourself in 30 years of a, a house being paid off. What's your 30 year goal? A lot of people can't think past the week. Some people can't think past the day. But the point of it is, you know, when you get to a certain age, YOLO should not even be in your vocabulary. And I'm just saying, but as always, we here and we gone.